The second half of the story also starts with a symbol. The international symbol for squatting, known in Spain as Acupa. Occupied buildings, called Casa Acupas, are all over Spain, especially in Barcelona. After learning about Barcelona's anarchist history, we had some questions about the present. These days, the factories that spawned anarchism lay largely abandoned. But we wondered, could the ideals of anarchism still exist today in the modern Acupa movement? Acupa turns abandoned buildings into homes and community centers. Like the anarchists, they are against private property and for collective property. But unlike the anarchists, they've never rallied widespread support. And so for 30 years, they've existed on the edges of Spanish society. However, Acupa is popular with young Spaniards, and Casa Acupas often host cultural events, parties, and concerts. But we didn't know much more than that, only that their views on property put them at direct odds with capitalism. And that means one big problem. It's illegal. So was a Koopa to be glorified or vilified? And what was the connection with anarchism? The only way to find out was to see it for ourselves. So we set off into the city to find out more about a Koopa. It seemed that a Koopa's clash with the law was about more than just rent-free living. It's a middle finger to the system. But a system that's failing a lot of Spaniards. Basically, it's a clash of ideologies. One that reminded us of Barcelona's turbulent past. Now, Spain is facing another crisis. And this time it's economic. Spain's problems began with a housing bubble. They built way too many homes. And now unemployment is about 25% and banks have foreclosed on the homes of more than 350,000 families. It's a painful irony. More families on the streets and more empty buildings than ever. Nationwide protests are demanding that politicians do something. And in the background of all of this unrest, there's a coupa who've been voicing their objections all along. So we're at this bank in Gracia, and the windows have been busted, the locks have been changed, they've taken the doors off and put rebar. This is really interesting stuff. This does not exist in America. I've never seen anything like this. And the thought of taking over a bank is something that, you know, I can't really even fathom. So we're gonna come back here. The opening hours are at six o'clock and hopefully we can come inside and talk to the people who are now running this place. We went inside and they told us what they were up to. Times are hard and they want to help. They collect food for their neediest neighbors. They have a library, computers, and a free clothing store. Sort of like a thrift shop. But there was one thing missing, money. So when we saw a poster for a workshop on self-sufficiency, we decided to go check it out. So behind us is the building of 15 October, which is the day a year ago last week when community activists took over this abandoned building from a bank and gave it over to 11 families who had lost their homes to foreclosures. So in addition to housing, they run a community bike center. We're going to go check it out and see what it's all about. bike shop basically it's pretty awesome because it functions unlike any other bike shop you've ever been to it's open it's free you come here if you need a spare part you can get one if you have an extra spare part to give you give it it's sort of like take a penny leave a penny but on a much larger scale but it's awesome there's families there's young people there's old people and everybody's getting along We sat down with one of the volunteers to ask him a few questions about what was going on. He preferred to remain anonymous, so let's just call him V, for a volunteer. Un 
Digamos que es fácil fomentar el trueque, ¿no? Hay mucha gente que tiene bicicletas que no usan desde hace mil años, ¿no? Comiendo mierda en un balcón. Gracias a esta gente el taller funciona porque obviamente solo funcionamos gracias a donaciones, si no, no tendríamos material para fomentar el trueque. ¿Por qué? Porque es un medio que una vez lo tienes funcionando, no tienes que invertir más dinero. Es todo lo que supone en ahorro, en transporte, es sano, no, es bueno para la salud, es ecológico, no consumes, no estás echando mierda. Y no gastas dinero. No gastas dinero, ahí está, ahorra. Obviamente, en momentos así, ¿no? Que está habiendo 50, 60 desahucios diarios, ¿no? Que está en cantidad de familia en la calle sin poder comer. Obviamente, digamos que un discurso anticapitalista puede tener más fuerza. Pero ya os digo, nosotros llevamos 6, 7 años, es independiente, intentamos eso, demostrar que hay otra manera de funcionar, ¿no? Que se puede funcionar sin dinero, por el trueque, fomentando el apoyo mutuo, el reciclaje. Entonces, aunque es cierto que en momentos como este quizás sea más importante aún no y tenga quizás más fuerza movimientos así en mi opinión hay que funcionar siempre así no queremos tener nada que ver con el estado con lo cual no queremos que nos cedan un espacio no queremos ninguna subvención no queremos saber nada de ellos queremos que nos dejen funcionar en libertad como nos gusta y obviamente como eso implica funcionar en espacios ocupados pues hasta ahora los problemas que tenemos son esos y a las personas que dicen que, que sois más idealistas y o no sois prácticos qué dices a ellos yo Sinceramente no quiero convencer a nadie y ya está, el que quiera funcionar de otro modo, pues allá él. Eh, no, la policía nunca va a dejar en paz, las leyes ahí están, es algo que se asume cuando tú ocupas, sabes que va a durar más tiempo, menos tiempo, pero eso es algo que sabes, ¿no? que antes o después se va a acabar, es así, intentamos ignorarlo sinceramente, lo que dure duró y después otra cosa. No sé, el tiempo dirá. Sí. Si no, fue bonito mientras duró. Ya. In a bank and a bike shop, we finally found our answer. The ideals of anarchism alive in 2012. A sense of communal obligation. The collective action of empowered individuals. Group strength through self-sufficiency. We decided to end our trip where it all began. A factory, the birthplace of anarchism. What struck us most about the people we'd met was not their idealism, but their fatalism. They were building castles in the sand, despite an ever-rising tide. But what if a Koopa could evolve? What if it moved out of the city and back to its roots? What if it took out a mortgage and finally bought a place? No more problems with the law. Abundant time, space, creativity. What could they accomplish then? What if, from the rubble of Barcelona's industrial past, there were people adapting the old anarchist principles into a sustainable, post-industrial future of prosperity? What if this place was real and these people existed? Would you believe us then? They call themselves a post-capitalistic society. And uh, off the bat, it seems a little bit off-putting, if you will, the name at least. But what they're doing here is absolutely amazing. The projects that they are undertaking are so forward-thinking. I mean, from recycling gray water and using it again to trying to heat their living quarters with compost. It's really, really inspiring to see what they're doing here. And obviously a lot of work is still to be done to make this place comfortable for living. But the people who are here, they're united in their belief that there is a different way for the future. And I really am very interested to see how this place turns out 10 years from now. Our trip to Barcelona opened our eyes to another world, one that has existed alongside our own all along. This was the essence of traveling deeper. 
And as we walked up that dirt road back towards Barcelona, the tourist traps on Las Ramblas felt a thousand miles away. We watched the sunset on our own adventure, and we wondered, what else existed beyond the hills of our imagination? What's the best thing about being a dad? Right now, absolutely, right now. It sure as hell beats going out to lunch at the Hotel Dell and spending a couple of hundred dollars and having a family argument. 